So here's an example from functions of several variables. We are given a function, a vector valued function, f, and we're asked to compute the Jacobian or the Jacobian matrix of this function. Okay, so firstly, um, you, let's just consider the function for a second. You put in values for x, y, and z, which could be considered a vector or a position vector. The function acts on the x, y, and z, and it produces a vector. Okay? Now, some of you might have seen this kind of format before. Okay? Um, it'd be related to cylindrical coordinates. Okay, but usually you have something like um, instead of x you have r, instead of y you have theta, and z just stays the same. So cylindrical coordinates. Okay, and this is useful in all sorts of uh, uh, areas involving cylindrical shapes and integration and all this sort of stuff. Now, the Jacobian matrix. What is it? Well, we can define it. You know, it's like a, it's like a, uh, a matrix that has partial derivatives as columns. Okay, that's one way of doing it. But why would we want to compute a matrix like that? Well, in vector calculus and calculus in higher dimensions, we're always trying to grow ideas from basic, say, first courses in calculus. So we know what a derivative is in a, in a, course, in first co a first course in calculus, and it has certain properties, and it, you, know, you can build certain theorems around it. What is a derivative in this sort of vector case or um, vector function case? And the answer is that the Jacobian is a kind of derivative. Okay, it's a kind of derivative. Just like the divergence is a kind of derivative. Just like the curl is a kind of derivative. Just like the gradient is a kind of derivative. They're all kinds of derivatives that do different things. Okay? So, uh, let's compute the, the Jacobian matrix of this function. And um, uh, we'll get a matrix. Now, the, the Jacobian matrix is also important when we do double in, or triple integrals and you do a change of variables. Okay, that's, that's probably the, the mo one of the most common applications of the Jacobian matrix. Okay, so let's define what we mean by the Jacobian matrix. Now, you can use different kinds of notation what I'm going to do is basically write the partial derivatives of the vector function f as columns. Okay, so let me show you what, what I mean by that. You, you may have seen different notation, but this is how I'm going to define it, right? Now I'm going to put these uh, commas in here just to separate the sort of columns, if you like. Okay, so by this notation, what I mean is you would go up here and you'll differentiate this um, vector partially with respect to x. So you differentiate that with respect to x, that with respect to x, and that with respect to x, and that would form your first column. Okay, then you move over and you differentiate every component in here with respect to y, partially. And then you would write that as a column. Right? And then you could move over to the z, differentiate that, that, and that with respect to z, and write that as a column. Okay, and have those, those three columns side by side are going to make up your Jacobian matrix. That's just the way that I, I, I've chosen to do it. You may be using other, um, other notation like the gradient. You know, you have the rows of the gradient of, um, of f, but, or the components of f, that's, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so let's go up here and differentiate partially with each component with respect to x and write it as a column. So this is going to become cosine y. This is going to become sine y. And down here, that's just going to become 0. Okay, I'm not going to put the commas in anymore. So let's go here, differentiate component-wise with respect to y, partially. And we'll write that as a column. So if I differentiate this with respect to y, I'll get negative x sine y. Because cosine y goes to negative sine y. Same again down here differentiate with respect to y, so sine y goes to cosine y. And down here that's just going to be 0. And the last column is the differentiate each of the components with respect to z and write them as a column. So you're going to get 0 from that, 0 from that, and 1 from that. Okay? 
So if I was to just make a little note, it's related to cylindrical coordinates or cylindrical transformation. Okay, usually in that in that case you have um, you know, R cosine theta, R sine theta, and just Z. But here we've just got X's and Y's. Okay, so our Jacobian is a square matrix. Uh, the F maps R3 into R3, and that sort of tells you the size of your matrix. It'll be a 3 by 3 matrix.